Italia. Gazzetta. In this morning's Gazzetta, are we dreaming or is that Ronaldo scoring for Inter? Yup, pinch yourselves as we bring you the game that saw the Brazilian truly back at last. Plus, as Milan face Juventus, we bring you the goal that almost stole Ronaldo's thunder from Andrei Shevchenko. And ahead of this Sunday's game with Roma, we've got Chevy talking to us exclusively. All that plus goodbye Mr Hodgson as the globe-trotting Roy gets his marching orders at Udinese thanks to the Daily Mail. And we find out how Southern Italy's team of death have made football a grave business. Yes, good morning everybody and welcome to Gazetta in the bustling city of Milan this week, which is full of seasonal good cheer, I must say. Anyway, we're here to look back on what's been a dramatic week for Serie A. Seven days that have seen us lose a Roy, but gain a Ronaldo. Anyway, in part one, we're going to be concentrating on the two games that last weekend hogged all the attention. One was Milan against Juventus, Italy's answer this to Real Madrid-Barcelona, and thus always one of the season's biggest draws. The other was league leaders Inter against Brescia, who were hanging on in there, down in ninth. Now, what marked this game out as special was, as you probably gathered, Inter's starting lineup, which featured Ronaldo, formerly world number one, but these days still struggling back from those two terrible knee injuries. Till now, Inter's cautious coach Hector Cooper had been reluctant to risk Big Ron in serious competition. Sunday morning, though, he surprised everyone by putting the Brazilian in from the start, alongside the club's other fresh back from injury star, Christian Vieri, thus bringing Inter's two biggest names together for the first time in more than two years. To top it all, Cooper also found room in his starting lineup for Alvaro Recoba, the Uruguayan just back from a passport ban. For all Brescia, must have been caking it. Well, let's start off today's show then with action from that match. Your commentator here, Gary Bloom. Vieri. Just trying to stab the ball forward here. It's Oaken. That's a great save by Castellazzi in the Brescia goal. Oaken is yet to score for Inter, but he was pretty close there. That's a delightful turn by Antonio Filippini, he's been brought down by Gresco. And Brescia will have this free kick right on the edge of the box. Brescia, remember, unbeaten at home this season, they're going to make life difficult for Inter, and Gresco now has a yellow card for that blatant foul on Antonio Filippini. Now, what can Brescia come up with here? Oh, that's a handball, surely, by Ronaldo. And the referee has waved play on, and Ronaldo brings the ball forward. Vieri and Brescia none too impressed with the referee's decision. They felt Ronaldo used an elbow to divert this free kick to safety. Rekoba being manhandled. Free kick quickly taken in towards Ronaldo. Vieri. Oh, Ronaldo's through! He scored! It's his first Serie A goal since the 21st of November 99. And look at Inter's delight. It's a goal which will bring a smile to the face of every true football fan. Ronaldo's back. His goal-scoring instincts are still there. A delightful one-two with Vieri. He beat the pressure off side trap, but what a tidy finish that was. So Brescia have this free kick. Tari, 1-1. And Inter's lead has lasted barely 60 seconds. It's the Albanian international on target. And it's his first goal since September when he claimed four in the first two Serie A games of the season. Junji's free kick and Initari was head and shoulders above the Inter defence here. Out back to Javier Zanetti, the Argentine international. And it's Javier Zanetti again. Oaken. He's chipped it to the back post. And Vieri's there. And Inter have the lead again. He just can't stop scoring since his return from injury. And this adds to that stunning hat-trick against Ipswich. But the architect of the goal here was Oaken. Tari. He has been a real threat throughout this game. The Albanian forces Toldo into a fine stop. 
But his aerial threat there in evidence again. Kellon. He's chipped it forward here towards Vieri. And the league leaders will stay top of Serie A. It's ten goals now in only six starts this season for Christian Vieri. Just got away from his marker, Andrea Susi. It's the Vieri and Ronaldo show for Inter. Seven goals in eight days now for the amazing Christian Vieri, but naturally even his performance in Brescia was overshadowed by the return of Ronaldo, whose goal, you'll be tickled to know, actually drew applause from fans in stadiums all over Italy on Sunday. Naturally, post-game in Brescia, Ronnie himself was radiant. No, no, certainly, it was great, especially because re-entrar in una squadra che è messa bene, compatta, Devo dire che è stato facile, devo ringraziare soprattutto al mister che mi ha dato la fiducia di entrare in campo e di dare il mio contributo alla squadra. E niente, sono felicissimo per come è andata la giornata, tre punti importantissimi, non era facile, il Brescia è una squadra che creerà dei problemi alle altre grandi, quindi sono contento. Well, viewers, with Ronaldo and Vieri now finally playing together up front for Inter, the Italian press have spent this week touting the Nerazzurri as the new title favourites. While they anyway held their lead on Sunday, let's now catch up with two of their rivals, Milan and Juventus. These two giant sides were meeting last Sunday night at the San Siro in the biggest, the oldest and the most illustrious fixture that the Italian calendar has to offer. And since both were already lying a significant distance off the lead, neither could afford to lose this match. For highlights now from the San Siro, here's your commentator, Peter Brackley. Here's Davids. He'll be very keen to impress on his return to the starting 11. Chamot. Del Piero as ever working hard. And it will be a free kick to Juve, conceded by the Argentine Chamot. He has come back into favour recently. Had an outstanding game against Palmer when it seemed he was on his way out of Milan. Whipped in dangerously, and right across the face of goal. Del Piero in the thick of the action. Ancelotti's team almost behind there. All eyes on Del Piero, Davids alongside. Ten goals from Del Piero so far this season, six of them in the Italian top flight. 22 concern, Christian Abbiati in that Milan goal. Here is Del Piero, fantastic save by Abbiati. Oh, what a stop that was. Such athleticism shown by him there as he sprung across his goal to palm it away. It was Trezeguet, then Davids, and Passotto to his left. Trezeguet, Del Piero! With his ability, it's well worth a try. Picked up quickly then by Trezeguet. They've got a good understanding. And on the volley, Del Piero. Always swinging wide of that upright, though. Turan. It's an inviting ball bent in two for Trezeguet. He got a piece of it. He's claiming not. He felt it came off the defender. The referee has given the goal kick. I think he might be right there. Helbig seemed to make a connection rather than Trezeguet. On to Shevchenko. Oh, skipping past the tackles here still. Shevchenko! Oh, fantastic! Breathtaking goal from Shevchenko! Ancelotti's team had created so little in the first phase of the match, but now Shevchenko has come up with an absolute blinder. He's got round Juliano here. Seemed to have been forced too wide. Passato couldn't get his tackle in, though. And how tight was this angle? That is some strike from Shevchenko. His 10th goal in Serie A and his 13th overall. 
And here's Del Piero now, and towards Trezeguet. And it was Maldini who finally got it out. Without claiming handball, damage wide of goal. It's all cut for nothing. Milan shading it thanks to that wonder goal in the first half from Andy Shevchenko. But Juventus will take heart from their comeback last season. They were 2-0 down and eventually forced a 2-2 draw. And they've made a change here. Zalajeta, Marcelo Zalajeta, the Uruguayan has come on in place of Nedved. Here is Zalajeta going down in theatrical fashion. But no, it's a penalty. The referee has pointed to the spot, and that is some substitution, some introduction. The referee's assistant in accord with referee Paparesta. It's a penalty. Milan absolutely furious within seconds of the restart. As he looks to go past Maldini here, well, that looks to me a dive. And now Del Piero has a golden chance to equalise for Juventus. And does so. Now it's game on. But such a controversial decision. Lippi's team are level. Marcelo Zalajeta, who was recalled by Lippi after three seasons out on loan, after the serious injury to Salas, brought on for the second half. And he was the man brought down for the penalty kick. Rui Costa. Given away, though, to Zabrotta. A crunching challenge by Maldini. Milan back in possession again now. Moreno. On by Gattuso to Rui Costa. Shevchenko. He's got fantastic feet. Still Shevchenko. Moreno. Oh, what a save. Ron Buffo. That's the best of Gianluigi Buffon. That's the man they signed from Palmer. Shevchenko did so well here to keep it in play. If he did, no, he didn't. That was over the line quite clearly. The play was allowed to go on. It was swept in by Moreno and forced away by Buffon. A top-class reaction saved by him. Well, just a draw then at the San Siro, but frankly that result was soon lost in all the commotion on Sunday night over that extraordinary goal from Andrei Shevchenko, especially when Juve's manager Marcello Lippi suggested that Andrei had only intended a cross. Cheeky fellow. Well, very shortly we're going to be hearing from Andrei himself on what he calls my most beautiful goal ever. But right now it's time for a break in the company of a man whose name has been mentioned a lot this week after Shevchenko's efforts, Marco Van Basten. <coughs> Welcome back, everyone. Well, here we are now at Milanello, Milan's headquarters, about an hour's drive north of the city, to meet up with Andrei Shevchenko and hear more about this goal of his that they're already fussing about here as one of the greatest in club history. No less a figure than Adriano Galliani, the club's de facto president, this week called Sunday strike by Chevy the best I've seen in all my time here. And as it turns out, Shevchenko himself is pretty impressed with it too. Il goal, quando l'hai rivisto, cosa hai pensato? Mm, Anch'io ho rimasto sorpreso perché eh, quando giochi una partita così contro Juve e fai gol è sempre una bella cosa, però quando sono andato a casa ho visto ancora immagini di questo gol. 
rimasto anch'io sorpreso perché è venuto un gol proprio bello, bello, bello. Ma lì per lì non ti pareva già un, un, un gol particolare quando giocavi? Ma no, un gol simile no, perché ma non so, mai visto un gol così o a forse che cioè, cioè hanno fatto parecchi gol, però un gol è veramente venuto quello che ho fatto io la mia esperienza calcistica mai ha fatto. Quale parte ti piace di più? La fatto di, aver, di essere di aver dribblato tre di Sì, ma io preferisco o... un gol. No, è, ma è stato tu, tutti e due cose, perché prima ho dribblato qualche uomo, poi ho guardato eh, specchio a porta, ho visto che eh, Buffon è stato un po'. Poi in, eh, volevo tirare, non avevo un'altra scelta solo tirare, ho fatto un tiro però c'è un merito tanto di fortuna tantissimo perché un tiro così ma se, se, mi fa, se mi dicono ripetere ancora mille volte non ce la faccio però è venuto un gol bellissimo okay. Shevchenko has now been at Milan for two and a half seasons and he's been scoring goals since day one he was Serie A's capo cannonieri in his debut season aged 23 and virtually never injured as he is, he's never looked back. Here's the numbers, 78 league appearances, 58 goals, making him the deadliest striker in Italy. From those 58 and leaving Sundays aside, he picks out the following moments as his favorites. Not surprisingly, Milan's manager, Carlo Ancelotti, says he's delighted to finally be on the same side as the young Ukrainian. No, si conta su un giocatore che può fare 20 25 gol in un campionato e soprattutto in Italia è, è, è un vantaggio. Lui è un giocatore straordinario che riesce a fare anche gol come ha fatto domenica sera. Senti, eh, fra un po' c'è il pallone d'oro, due volte sei arrivato terzo, ti basta? Ma io vorrei vincere. Però io so che è importante non solo quello che fa il giocatore, è importante anche qualche titolo che posso vincere con squadra, anche con nazionale. Purtroppo che questi tre anni non riuscivo a vincere niente. Questo, mi... Questo è un grosso vantaggio per altri giocatori. Io purtroppo... No, adesso è difficile pensare per pallone d'oro, se, se, se non vince il campionato, non vince Champions League e anche dopo questa sconfitta contro con nazionale che non vado anche mondiale, però... E potrebbe essere questo l'anno buono per Milan e te? Ma io spero sì, perché abbiamo una buona squadra, però è importante lottare fino alla fine, poi vediamo dove arriviamo. Well, Shevchenko is a hard act to follow, viewers, but on we go now with more of the best action from last weekend. And up next, indeed, three of Milan's rivals in the leading group. That's Roma, Chievo, and first of Lazio at home last Sunday against Fiorentina. And watch out for some pretty fine goal scoring here, too, from Hernan Crespo. Over anyway to Johnny Gould. Lazio went into this game on the back of four straight league wins. And they started impressively against a Fiorentina side that had just joined the Bianco Celesti in being eliminated from Europe. Just 12 minutes in, Karol Poborski fired the side from the capital ahead. It was only his second goal in Serie A for the club. Poborski was at the heart of Lazio's best moves. Here, the Czech international fashioned a chance for Simone Inzaghi. However, he failed to get the better of the Viola's former Arsenal keeper, Alex Manninger. 
But the second goal that Lazio deserved arrived on the hour mark. Inzaghi, again preferred to Claudio Lopez, was once more denied, only for Hernan Crespo to claim his seventh goal in the last five games in emphatic fashion. The Viola had lost last season's corresponding fixture 3-0 and history was to repeat itself in this game. After Roberto Baronio, currently on loan from Lazio, was sent off for descent, Claudio Lopez sealed Lazio's fifth straight win as Fiorentina went down to their third consecutive Serie A defeat. Luigi Del Neri was looking for Chievo to bounce back following the previous week's controversial defeat at Milan. But it was Lecce who started this game the brighter. Rodolfo Giorgetti coming within inches of putting the visitors ahead. Having survived that early scare, Chievo took the lead on 22 minutes and it was a goal that owed much to some poor defending. Alberto Savino's hesitation allowing Massimo Marazzina to strike for the seventh time in Serie A this season. The former Regina striker was also on target the previous week at the San Siro. Moments later, Chievo almost doubled their lead. After Cristian Manfredini was kept out by the frame of the goal, Jonathan Binotto, in for the suspended Eriberto, really should have done better. Chievo were looking to maintain Serie A's only 100% home record, but their hopes were dealt a blow on 52 minutes. Lecce's Slovenian striker Sebastian Cimirotic grabbed his first goal in Italy to deservedly bring the visitors level. But the home side restored their lead with a quarter of an hour remaining. For the second successive week, Bruno Cirillo conceded a penalty, this time for a foul on Jason Maiele. Eugenio Corini maintained his immaculate record from the spot this season. And that's four out of four now for the former Juventus midfielder. Lecce's miserable day was sealed by the late dismissal of Gica Popescu and it ended 2-1. So, maximum points for both Chievo and Lazio, but could Roma maintain their challenge in what was a potentially tricky clash at Parma? With the best of the action, here's Gary Bloom. And here's Vincent Condella. He didn't play up to his usual standard against Liverpool. And he's picked out Marco Del Vecchio. Comes off Ferrari and Totti! Well, the header by Ferrari just simply dropped the ball delightfully into the path of Totti, who does have an ankle injury. But that wasn't evident here when he struck this ball ferociously towards goal. Fouzet. It's Diego Fouzet, the former Palmer player. And Almeida happy to concede the corner kick. Sebastian Frey ready on his line. Marcus Asunsen. It's Panucci! Terrific chance there for Christian Panucci. He was kept tied in midweek, otherwise he would have started in Cafu's absence. And Bomb on the end of this one. Panucci got back to make a challenge, and the ball dropped to Frey. And here's Totti now for Roma. Forward towards Batistuta. Terrific attempt by Batistuta. Batistuta said this week he's going through the worst spell of his career. Well, that wasn't too far away. Mamushi. Falsini now. Bomber desperate for a win to move away from the relegation zone. That's a bomber. Condela hesitated. Divayo! And the former Lazio man is on target. There was some hesitation by number 32, Vincent Condela here. And Divayo nipped in and thrashed the ball in. What was Condela doing? Divayo scores on 31 minutes. Roma chasing the game. Marcus Asuncao in towards Marco Del Vecchio, who's been fouled by Jetu. 
and there's going to be a yellow card here for Jetu, despite all Palmer's protests. He was clearly holding back Marco Del Vecchio. Marcus Asson Sauer with a free kick. One one. And four minutes after the restart, Roma are level through their Brazilian Marcus Assuncao. And it's four goals in his last seven starts in Serie A. Splendid free kick. As De Vaya prepares to take this free kick. Oh, it's almost an own goal. Came off the head of Walter Samuel, the Argentine international, who almost inadvertently headed the ball past his own goalkeeper. Diego Fuser taking the flight to his former club. Totti. Cassano. That's a fine save by Sebastian Frey. The French goalkeeper's done exceptionally well there. Just narrowed the angle for Cassano. Emerson getting it wide. Panucci. Fuser. He thought about the shot. Oh, it's gone in! It's taken a deflection! And on 77 minutes, Roma had the lead. Oh, Fuser scored Roma's late winner against Venezia last week, and that was deflected too. And would you believe the game about to be settled by an ex Palma player? Unless Di Voyo can rescue it for Palma here. Great save by Antonioli. He's really had an impressive game in goal for Roma. Our Palmer to be frustrated right at the death. Well, viewers, mark my words, there'll be more from round 14 later on in today's show, but right now it's time to pause and check out the week's news. And among the top stories this time, Roy Hodgson gets kicked out at Udinese, Italy's clubs strike it lucky once more in the UEFA Cup draw, and at 69 years of age, is Cesare Maldini going to the next World Cup? Well, first up then, the Hodgson story with Roy Rogers up in Udine. Now, people had been predicting Roy's untimely end since before even the first game of this season. He was, in fact, the bookies' favourite to be first City A manager to go. But oddly enough, when his departure finally came this Sunday, it was after a home victory over Verona and with the team finally back up in the top half of the table. What caused the bust-up, though, was on Sunday morning a local newspaper printing an interview with Hodgson in which the manager suggested that the club didn't support him or the players enough and added that he now regretted joining Udinese. Well, at that, the club president, Gianpaolo Pozzo, immediately seized his opportunity and thundered, in that case, Mr Hodgson should resign. Fair enough. There's just one small but to make, though, as uh, Cher told her plastic surgeon, and it's that Hodge never said any of those things. The quotes were actually just poorly translated excerpts from an interview, a reasonably innocuous interview, too, that he'd previously given the Daily Mail in England. Not that any of that mattered to Udinese, who have, in fact, had a replacement manager for Hodgson standing by for months. They, this Monday, thus announced that even though they accepted that Hodgson had been misquoted, the two parties had decided to end things there anyway by mutual consent. Well, the article was just an excuse, Roy confirmed to us this week. I wasn't the right kind of manager for Mr Pozzo, even though I clearly was for the team. I'm sad not to finish the job I had here, although I'm looking forward to living in the real world again. Well, while Roy rides off too, we read quite possibly the Scotland job. Wow, how real do you want it? Udinese anyway on Tuesday ushered in his replacement, Gian Piero Ventura. A little dusty from two months sitting around waiting, but enthusiastic nonetheless. This is the strongest team I've ever been given indeed, says Ventura, whose only previous stint in Serie A, admittedly, was with Cagliari. Well, he faces a tough time of it at Udine. He takes over a squad featuring no less than 15 different nationalities that's now losing two of its most important Italians to boot. That's Captain Valer. Valerio Bertotto, hit by a crochet ligament injury this week and thus out for another five months, and Roberto Muzzi, who Ventura happily described Tuesday as the most talented Italian striker around, but who come January is almost certain to be moving on to either Parma or Juventus. Good luck to all concerned. Well, let's do some moving on of our own now to some more managerial news. And next up, Gigi Simone, the man famous for having once been fired by Inter on the very day that he was named Serie A Manager of the Year. This week, anyway, the 62-year-old Simone came out of mothballs and decided to try his luck in Bulgaria, signing on with local giants CSKA Sofia on a two-year deal. 
Meanwhile, not to be outdone by Simone's uh, Sofia choice, Cesare Maldini, as mentioned, is set for a comeback too, at the World Cup no less. Paolo Maldini's father, 69 years old, yet still strangely youthful looking, last saw action as caretaker manager of Milan at the end of last season. This week though, Maldini flew off to meet officials from Paraguay, who've offered him a six-month deal to manage their side at Korea Japan. Paraguay split with their last manager just one week after qualifying for the World Cup and despite a best ever second place finish in their South American qualifying group. Maldini, who knows all about strange partings, says that he'll give this expectant nation his answer by this Sunday, but it's seen here as likely that he'll accept for two reasons. Firstly, Paraguay are drawn in a group with South Africa, Slovenia and Spain and thus have a fair chance of making the second round. Secondly, his experience at the last World Cup still rankles. In France 98, indeed, Maldini Maldini's Italy side were pilloried at home for being too defensive, but as he points out, that Italy never lost a game. It took the eventual champions France to knock them out on penalties. Well, as fate would have it this time, since Paraguay are in Group B, if they survive long enough, they'll likely be facing Italy in the quarterfinals. A chance to see Maldini's true colours at last, or not. Anyway, on now to our final item for this morning, which is this Wednesday's draw for the next round of the UEFA Cup. Three Italian clubs still involved, that's Parma, Milan and Inter, and since all three were seeded, they couldn't end up with each other. Here, though, is who they'll be facing. Milan get the Dutch side Roda, who are lying all the way down in 13th place right now in Holland. Perhaps the easiest draw of all three, but warns Carlo Ancelotti, let's not complicate things by getting complacent. Parma will be facing Israeli side Hapul Tel Aviv, the team who knocked out Chicken Chelsea, and still a draw which raises all sorts of interesting questions. In fact, Parma say they haven't yet ruled out asking to play on neutral ground. Finally, Inter will be hoping to be A-OK -okay against AEK Athens of Greece. Ho oh ho! Well, all in all, another successful draw then for the Italians who managed to avoid such dangers as Borussia Dortmund, Valencia, Rangers, PSV Eindhoven and Leeds. Although, if the Italians do make it to the next round, the quarterfinals, things will get more interesting. Parma and Milan, indeed, would have to face each other, while Inter would probably come up against Valencia, manager Hector Cooper's old side, of course. While the next round of games, anyway, will be played on the 21st and 28th of February. And with that, viewers, we come to the end of this week's news roundup. In a couple of minutes' time, we'll be bringing you the truly bizarre story of Southern Italy's team of death. Right now, though, it's time for a break in the company of that forward thinking fullback, Christian Panucci. <laughs> speaking anyway. Over to Johnny. Welcome back everyone to Gazetta in Milan. Well next up on the show Johnny Gould lifts up some southern Italian rocks and peers at all the strange creatures scurrying around in the sunlight, metaphorically speaking anyway. Over to Johnny. In the south of Italy, they say that there are only two certainties in life. Firstly, that Napoli won't win this weekend. And secondly, death. Which is where AC Stellazzura come in. Based 40 miles from Naples, they're currently top of the Prima Categoria, which is the Italian equivalent of the league below the conference. So you might call it the graveyard of Italian football. 
and they're sponsored by the local undertaker. Abbiamo scelto le onoranze funebri di Lettieri appunto perché in zona qui nel nostro paese non c'è non c'è molta industria e il tasso di disoccupazione è molto elevato. Non a caso la nostra squadra, io compreso, siamo quasi tutti disoccupati. Il presidente mi aveva chiesto di farci da sponsor in modo che insieme abbiamo deciso che facendo forse questa cosa attiravamo l'attenzione poiché ci sta un, un sacco di ragazzi che cercano lavoro noi abbiamo fatto in modo che conoscendo San Felice a Cancello può darsi che un domani arriverà qualcuno, qualche fabbrica, qualcosa possono venire a finalmente investire nella nostra zona It's believed to be the only deal of its kind in the world. And like all good sponsorship deals, there's a host of benefits and some very interesting merchandise. Ma adesso c'è una richiesta di questi souvenir che è una cosa pazzesca. Ogni persona del mio paese, ogni tifoso vuole questa baretta perché abbiamo fatto capire che la morte che noi abbiamo come San Vericiano ce l'abbiamo nel cuore, nell'animo, non, non che ci devono mettere nella bara per far sì che eh, è qualche cosa di brutto. Io in effetti non mi aspetto niente, quindi con questo non significa che adesso io sarò chiamato in altre città, anzi me lo auguro, però sarà difficile. Facendo più gol sarà una bara ancora più bella e sarà messa, diciamo così, in, uh, in palio per il calciatore della nostra squadra, della mia squadra, che farà più gol. The deal is something of an appropriate illustration of the current state of football in the South. Lecce are currently the only team south of Rome to be playing in Serie A, while Napoli, champions just 11 years ago, are languishing in Serie B con il sud che soffre molto in Italia ed è anche un po' il calcio economico di oggi, il calcio dove conta moltissimo il fatturato, il calcio dove contano moltissimo gli imprenditori eh, che devono investire molto, eh, le grandi holding che devono essere alle spalle delle società, nel sud questo non c'è e il calcio ha dovuto pagarne inevitabilmente le conseguenze. Certainly any financial injections are welcome to the region's football and Stella Azzora's deal hasn't done them any harm and some unusual training techniques have helped them to the top of their league leaving players and coach happy even if the circumstances are somewhat unusual e oggi abbiamo vinto un'altra partita con questa vittoria che abbiamo ottenuto oggi nonostante le difficoltà che abbiamo incontrato sul terreno di gioco ci hanno portato prima in classifica si vede che la morte ci porta fortuna it's a wide wide world of sports isn't it well with the southern death cult live and clearly still kicking let's move on now to some teams providing stiff opposition in an altogether more conventional sense with the remaining part of last weekend's action in Serie A. Up next it's uh, Piacenza against Bologna with Gary Bloom who for once has got the foggiest. Despite the heavy fog which engulfed the Gorilli Stadium this match was given the go-ahead by referee Alfredo Cantalange. And despite three straight home defeats, Piacenza started well. Indeed, Dario Hubner had the ball in the net early on, only for it rightly to be disallowed for offside. But it was the visitors who came closest to scoring in the first half. After the out of sorts, Julio Cruz wasted this chance. Fabio Pecchia, yet to score for Bologna in Serie A, failed to put Francesco Guidel inside ahead. And they were made to pay for those misses. Shortly after the break, Dario Hubner grabbed his 11th goal in as many games in spectacular fashion. Bologna's problems increase with the dismissal of Pierre Wome, who received his second yellow card for not retreating at this free kick. When it was eventually taken, Dario Hubner struck his 12th goal of the season. Indeed, he's claimed two-thirds of all Piacenza's goals in the league. It ended 2-0 as Bologna went down to their third defeat in four games.
fresh from their thrilling comeback against Palmer the previous week, Udinese were hoping to win consecutive league matches for the first time in over a year. The Bianconeri were indebted to Luigi Turchi for keeping out Mario Frick here. Verona were to eventually take the lead on 70 minutes. Following Caballero's foul on Anthony Seric, they were awarded a penalty. However, Massimo Oddo was denied by Turchi and then saw his follow-up cleared off the line by Bototto but made it third time lucky when he converted Mutu's cross. However, that was as good as it got. Just ten minutes later, Seric was dismissed following his second caution and, like in their last away game at Torino, the sending off proved to be the turning point. With seven minutes remaining, Luis Helguero went down under Zanke's innocuous challenge and referee Farina pointed to the spot, much to the fury of Verona boss Alberto Manassani. And like Oddo, Roberto Muzzi maintained his 100% record from the spot this season, not once but twice, as his initial effort was ordered to be retaken because of encroachment. Mutsi held his nerve to up his tally to 10 in Serie A for the current campaign. Verona's misery was sealed late on as 20-year-old Giampiero Pinci struck for the first time ever in Italy's top flight. However, as we heard earlier, it turned out to be the last act of Roy Hodgson's reign in Udine. Serge Cosmi was looking for his Perugia team to bounce back following successive defeats away to Chievo and Juventus and his side almost made a dream start Davide Biocco couldn't have come much closer to only his second ever Serie A goal the home side continued to press and Marco Di Loreto brought the best out of Rossi in the Venezia goal here Serge Cosmi's nerves were calmed on the stroke of half-time, however, as Perugia's Greek international, Zizas Rizas, gave the home side the lead. It was his fifth league goal of the season and ended a three-game goal rout. The home side doubled their lead with just ten minutes remaining, and it was a historic goal. Rahman Razai's goal was the first ever scored in Italy's top flight by an Iranian and secured Perugia's 100th win in Serie A. Despite a late rally, Venezia went down to their fourth defeat in a row and their winless run stretched to 13 matches. Torino went into this game looking for their fourth successive home win and hit the front after just 14 minutes. Fabio Galante struck for the third time in Serie A this season. Atalanta were looking for their first win away to Torino since 1995, but they nearly fell further behind to Giancarlo Camolese's side here. However, Massimo Taibi performed heroics to keep out Daniele Delicari. Somewhat against the run of play, though, the visitors equalised on the stroke of half-time. Atalanta's man of the moment, Cristiano Doni, claimed his tenth goal in as many games. And it was the visitors who dominated the second half. And the Corrado Colombo, greatly impressive, the previous week against Inter, had wasted this opportunity. Atalanta's summer acquisition from Torino did put the Nerazzurri ahead. Despite the efforts of Marco Ferranti, the Granata went down to their first home defeat in two and a half months and their misery was complete with the late dismissal of Luca Bucci following this body check on Fausto Rossini. Atalanta, meantime, celebrated their third consecutive away win.
For Team of the Week, we've gone for the league leaders, Inter. The Nerazzurri may blow hot and cold, but with Ronaldo and Vieri fit, they're a completely different proposition. In Brescia, their stunning partnership made all the difference. And on this form, you wouldn't bet against them ending up as Team of the Season. And both Ronaldo and Vieri make it into the Serie A best 11 from last weekend. They're joined in attack by Milan's Andrei Shevchenko, while in midfield the Lazio duo of Gianni Keda and Stankovic are joined by Fuzer and Doni of Roma and Atalanta respectively. While in defence, Roma's Walter Samuel lines up alongside Massimo Carrera and Parma's Fabio Cannavaro. Udinese's Luigi Torci takes his place in goal. Do you agree or disagree with our choices? Log on to this address and give us your thoughts. For Player of the Week, meantime, we could have gone for either Christian Vieri or Andrei Shevchenko. But instead, we've chosen Inter's reborn Brazilian superstar, Ronaldo. His first Serie A goal in just over two years was applauded not only by fans in Brescia, but in grounds throughout Italy. Let's hope it's the first of many. Welcome back, Ronaldo. There was no doubt about the goal of the week, though. Following his outrageous effort against Juventus, Andrei Shevchenko may even have scored the goal of the season. That draw of the San Siro did little for either Milan or Juve's title prospects, with Inter, Chievo, Roma and Lazio all winning last weekend. Elsewhere, as we've already heard, despite moving into the top half, Roy Hodgson has seen his tenure with Udinese come to an end. At the other end, the bottom four all lost last weekend, while victories for Perugia, Piacenza and Atalanta eased their relegation fears. In the scorer's chart, Dario Hoopner's two goals against Bologna saw the Piacenza striker move two goals clear at the top. Meantime, Cristiano Doni, Andrei Shevchenko and Roberto Muzzi all moved into double figures, while Marco Di Vaio, Cristian Vieri and Hernan Crespo were also on target last weekend. Now it's competition time here on Gazetta. Want to win a trip to see the Azzurri play in the 2002 World Cup in Japan and Korea? Each week on Football Italia Heroes, one lucky winner will receive a Garlando football table. Plus, every person who answers the question correctly will have a chance to win that big trip to the World Cup finals. If you're 18 or over, you can enter via the Football Italia website at channel4.com or by telephoning on 0900 174 74 44. Calls cost 60p per minute and shouldn't take longer than two and a half minutes. All you have to do is answer this simple question. On how many occasions in the 90s did Milan win Lo Scudetto? Was it A, 4, B, 5 or C, 6? Lines close next Wednesday at midday, but remember to ask for permission if it's not your phone. You can also find the answer and lucky winner posted on the Football Italia website, where among all the usual info, you can keep up to date with the latest Serie A scores. Just click on to www.channel4.com slash Football Italia to find out more. Back in Serie A, Juventus will be looking to get their title challenge back on track tomorrow afternoon as they take on Piacenza. Elsewhere, Lazio travel to Verona, but the two biggest games see the top two, Inter and Chievo, clash tonight at the San Siro. While tomorrow evening at the Stadio Olimpico, the champions Roma take on Milan. Here's James. Well, Johnny, another big weekend coming up for Serie A over the next two days. And come to think of it, when else would it be? Hard to know which of these two fixtures is the choicer. Is it Roma-Milan with Wonderboy Shevchenko up against the Italian champions at a sold-out Stadio Olimpico? Or the game tonight at the San Siro, the battle of the top two with little Chievo taking on Inter and their dream team of Vieri and Ronaldo. Well, whatever, we'll have the best of the action from both games in tomorrow night's La Partita show, along with all the rest of the goals from round 15 of the season. So make sure you join us for that. In the meantime, Anyway, another Gazetta comes to a conclusion with our usual cheery wave. Look, it's a two-hander this time. And from all of us here, a heartfelt arrivederci.